Privacy is a big issue, now more than ever. Daily, we give websites all of our identifying information like addresses, birth dates, even credit card numbers, all with the assurance that they'll keep our information safe. But that isn't necessarily the case. What is a secure password exactly? You'd be surprised. I'm sure you've all been forced to make a strong password before. I bet you've been told that in order to make a strong password you need at least eight characters, one uppercase, one lowercase, one number, one symbol, but it can't be an ampersand or an exclamation point. <gasps> Oh, I know, I'll use my birth date and my friend's name. That will be completely random and unpredictable. Despite what they tell us, if you just take a step back and look, things like names, places, cities, zip codes, and so on are formulaic. Yeah, your buddy Bahadush is actually a really popular Turkish name. So companies, also, why are you giving us instructions on how to narrow the randomness of our passwords? Really? Really? I mean, come on, with so many set requirements of a password to be a specific way, we'll likely end up just making something we'll never remember, and then because it's so hard to remember, we'll reuse it all over the place. It's just super hackable that way, and it ends up being not random at all, ironically. This is such a huge problem, XKCD even poked fun at the issue. Through 20 years of effort, we have successfully trained everyone to use passwords that are hard for humans to remember, but easy for computers to guess. Now don't get me wrong, I'm equally guilty of this. I have to catch myself all the time, and it's because we're indoctrinated by those websites and other people to kind of think that way. So we have to retrain ourselves in how we judge the criteria of making a strong password, and I think we can do that by knowing how passwords are hacked. We can figure out how to make them secure. Thanks XKCD, but what is entropy? Like the comic said, what makes a password hard for a computer to guess is called entropy. It's basically like a measurement on how unpredictable and random a piece of information is. Again, we've been taught to think that basic words in the English language or what have you are pretty insecure, but that's not necessarily true. If you can bear with me, there's actually a really easy way to show you how unpredictable a word is. So I'm just gonna list and see exactly how many words there are in the English language, which so far in my console is 234,937. That means if your password is just one random word, we have to go through over 230,000 of them to try to crack it. So mathematically, each word that we choose has a log base of two out of 234,937 log two, and then the amount of words in the English language, and that one word equals 17.8 bits of entropy. So to paint a picture here, if you were to adhere to the whole formula of what a lot of websites instruct you to do, that would be probably around 17 to 25 bits of entropy on a good day. On the other hand, if you chose four random words easy to remember from the English language, math tells us it would take 3,500 years to crack it using the best GPU cracking out there. And that is the age of the longest living organism on Earth. The bristlecone pine, actually. So if that's all it takes to make a super strong password, why wouldn't we do it? We're words people. We go to work and we throw words at people and they throw words back and we comprehend them. It's what we do. And when you get right down to it, smart hackers are not going to be sitting there with that balaclava on trying to pick their brain on what your mother's maiden name is. It's just not realistic. In light of that information, why don't we just make passphrases or a bunch of random words for everything? Well. For some reason, when you're in a forum or you're trying to log into super popular websites, you pretty much get smacked down for trying to make a password that will protect yourself. And you become, again, forced into the constraints of whatever the company decides security really is. But now that you know about entropy and randomness and unpredictability, you know that those guidelines are bullshit. And when we know that password cracking is a lot less the human brain conjuring up human-generated ideas and more of a computer's mathematical ability to guess based on known formulas, like what you're seeing now, it just seems ignorant of companies to expect and require something that will in and of itself leave you vulnerable. So fix it, you guys. There's just, there's no excuse. And mom, I love you, but if any of your passwords are still mommy123, you deserve to be hacked. Did I mention I love you? Thanks for watching my show, OS Alt, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on next week's episode of All Things Open Source. And I'm talking Linux games. Excite!
since we're on the topic of games, you know which one's really fun? Download that app. Seriously, I collect phone applications like I do magic cards. But really, is it so much to ask to just have one program that covers all my internet browsing needs while still being fast and powerful? Like that. That's UC Browser. UC Browser is on the case with HTML5 support, download management, gestures, cloud syncing your data, and that's just the beginning. Best of all, it's an open source platform and is completely free. I will put a link below in the description so you can find out how to speed your browsing up and put a little amorphous annotation that will take you right to the Google Play Store. Oh, and don't worry about where you are in the world, what phone you have, or what language you speak. UC Browser is going strong with 400 million users on over 2,000 phone models, so try it out on your phone today.